Public space travel. Public space travel. And so on and so on. I can't help but believe that in the future we'll see throughout the world an increasing trend toward the next logical step. We will achieve full communism. Public space travel. Public space travel. And so on and so on. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Public Space Travel. I'm Lazarus Wolf. With us today is Lucy. Hello. And our shadow producer, Marks. What's up? What's up? It's, uh, it's like, it's like, I feel like it's the end of the first week of the, like, of the U.S. finally admitting there's a problem with the coronavirus. <laughs> Day seven. Uh, quarantine. It's been very bored, sick of masturbating, and there's <laughs> nothing to do. All of the weed has been smoked. I've seen it. I've seen all of Pornhub. <laughs> it is done. <laughs> <laughs> you have to change the uh, the name of the show to Pandemic Space Travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, distant Space Travel. <laughs> yeah, it's, please, it's, uh, please, when you listen to this episode, there should be a six feet, a six foot uh, distance between you and your speaker. Exactly. Well, I'm all, I'm all up on my microphone right now because that's how I like to be. I like my sound to be fully robust. <laughs> and also, I'm the only one that uses this, so I think I'm okay. <laughs> Actually, I came in and I rubbed up both of your microphones before. Oh, no. Uh, what are you, that one basketball player? <laughs> oh, no. You know what's funny is, um, so our podcast is specifically mostly most well equipped to do this because we've been doing this virtual since day one That's true. <laughs> yeah um there's a, a ton of other podcasts where they're like so yeah this is our first episode we're all from working from home we're via skype or google hangouts and here we are and this is this is like what what episode are we on now like 15 or something i think this is 12 this will be 12 oh, oh 12 yeah. okay so like yeah, like our twelfth episode and this is like all we've ever done is just record in different parts of the world via Skype. Um and uh but at the same time, every time I feel like every time we're about to record there's some shit that happens with our yeah. with our audio or video yeah. and every time we spend like thirty minutes just trying to get <laughs> stuff together. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's good. I think this will be kind of like a mini little episode because you know everybody's at home. Uh, everybody should be at home if they can, um, and we could talk about like that class element. I, yeah, there. Um, I know. But Lu- Lucy just touched his face. To podcasting. What's that? Lucy just touched his face. So. Ooh! All right. It's so now hard we not lost. to. <laughs> We're now accepting applications for co-hosts. I. Uh, you try. <laughs> <laughs> You try not touching your face when it's as beautiful as mine. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep. Uh, I do think it, it. it is it is important to social distance, uh, if able, of course. But I also do think you know this is gonna be a really hard time for everybody, and that's you know everybody in the world, um, especially those who uh, are probably more at disenfranchised uh, than, for example, like rich folks. But I do think it's a time to like nurture those relationships of community and help each other mm-hmm. out. Don't just don't just stock up on your TP. Mm-hmm. Back that ass up in the shower and donate that TP to somebody who really needs it. Dude. For real. Like we all have <laughs> like in the US bidets aren't a huge <sighs> thing, but we all have showers. I mean, we don't all, I shouldn't say we assume everyone has a shower, but a it's, lot of people uh, have showers. <laughs> it's uh, it's the big toilet paper companies that have a vested interest in making sure we don't have bidets. <laughs> the, the toilet paper industrial complex. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so do that, do what we just said, but also, uh, you know, make sure you're taking care of your, your mental health. And your physical health too. I know that in times of panic and anxiety and so forth, it could definitely have an effect on your immune system, which obviously doesn't help. 
um, in this about case, what's yeah. going on. Yeah, so like, you gotta take care of yourself. Sometimes maybe, like you know, you gotta keep stay informed and you know like, and all of that. But like at the same time, like do what you gotta do to not go into full panic mode like twenty four seven. You know, like take some self care time. Um, I I'm really curious how this will pan out. I, I my suspicion is probably gonna last till at least June or July, and we'll probably see a second wave of it flu season later this year, but. Who knows? Yeah, I think I think I don't have a source on this right like on hand, but I think there like an estimate is probably about July. Um and for for sure, uh I think we need to be cautious about it in the fall coming back. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wash your hands, wash your ass, <laughs> don't touch your face. I mean, you don't get those mixed washing up. Washing your ass. <laughs> don't get those mixed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I forgot which comedian. I, there was a comedian that said this. He was like, "How are you going to tell your loved one that you love them, and you're going to say it right to their face, and you don't even watch your asshole?" <laughs> <laughs> I think my my most recent. Um, kerfuffle i don't want to call it that is uh people people who have showers that don't have a detachable like head thing because you know that means they're not washing that ass well no you can do it there's a way to do it you turn How do you around, do it? like as long well it depends on the water pressure Tell me. but you turn around and you just uh-huh. spread those cheeks and uh-huh. you let the water run down through the middle like a river it's this not as powerful technique. it's not as powerful it's not as is and that good enough? It's not as I would say like it's not as um thorough. Do you would you say it's like high enough standard that like one could rim job and like feels feel safe and secure? Because that yeah. that's the standard I'm going by. Well you you also want to mix in like your own hand in there too. Mm-hmm. You need to take that <laughs> soap. Whoa, whoa, where does that happen? You need to take before that soap. after you lather river. your hand up with soap and then you just you finger yourself? Get up in that ass. You uh, you <laughs> karate chop your own asshole with your soapy hands. <laughs> <laughs> karate chop. <laughs> That's great. That's uh, stay tuned on our website, publicspacetravel.cool. Wa- <laughs> we'll we'll show a a good illustration of how to karate chop your ass for hygiene purposes. It, stay I tuned. Feel like I just doxed myself. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, that's the guy. There's only one guy who does that. <laughs> <laughs> you did something to yourself. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, you got to have fun wherever you can right now. <laughs> True. So I think for for those that, um, I mean, maybe either haven't been catching up with the news or just been on the Colorado River trip, like that group of people who or, are like totally or, oblivious. Uh, or your Jared Leto coming out of a silent retreat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to draw this from uh, this, the website is uh, N as in Nancy COV 2019.live. And this was a site created by, uh, I mis- sorry if I mispronounce this, but Avi Schiffman, their high schooler from Washington State University or Washington State, United States of America. And they've been constantly like upkeeping keeping up with like the tracks, uh, the, the stats, sorry, it's been one of those days, you know, it's been one of those weeks, folks. And, uh, just as of this moment that we're recording, so it's like Thursday, like 7 PM total confirmed cases in the world is, um, 246,583. We've got a total deceased is now up to 10,171, uh, total serious cases, 7,010. And the total recovered is 85,768. Uh, total countries infected is 165 out of 195. Really interesting there. But, um, you know, this is this is serious. Um, I feel like there's a lot of ways we could go with this, and we'll probably spread this out throughout our uh, extended quarantine. And about, like, talking to boomers who may be just seeing this as not a big deal because they lived through the Y2K virus. Um <laughs> People who, um, 
people who maybe think that the flu kills more uh, people than uh, this does. I think that's also a ridiculous claim. Um, but, you know, this is some serious shit. And if you're able to, again, like, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones and your community and, and also social distance. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's like... Um... I don't, I don't know where to begin. I'm, I'm always curious because actually whenever I look at the numbers of those infected and those that have died, I can't remember like what it was, you know, like three days ago. And, um, like, uh, like I just, I, I'm always kind of curious. I don't know if maybe I'm missing some information there and then maybe we could just edit it in there or, or something, but I'm always just kind of like, I don't know. Like, like every time I look at it, I'm like, okay, that's a lot of deaths. Um, I don't know if that's more deaths or less deaths. Like, I don't know if it's like a steep, like it's a, I don't know the curve, I guess is what my question is. I'm always like, what is the curve? Is it spiking? Is it, is it, you know, is it an exponential growth? Um, Mm -hmm. I think it is. And I think it's what people have been saying, but, um, I've just been really curious about about that because that's I think that's important to know going forward and oh, I got and uh, oh, the deaths and also just the numbers in general like like we're we're basically like I said like we're basically in week one of America like publicly nationally admitting that there's an there's an issue we're only I think maybe I feel like four days into like like cities and stuff doing actual quarantines and lockdowns and starting to actually enforce and mandate closures and things like that. Um, but there's still a lot of gray areas and like loose rules with that. Like, I mean, just, just today there, uh, game or GameStop put out a memo to all their employees saying, Oh, GameStop is going to stay open because we decided Mm -hmm. that we are an essential business. So if a, if a police officer tries to like, they, like they're, they're sending out letters to their employees, telling them to fight the police so that they can stay open. And Holy shit. so it's just like, there's no consistency on the federal level in terms of what we should be doing. So, but like, I feel like the moment Tom Hanks got it is the moment that America <laughs> woke up to it yeah. and was like, Oh no. White, white America was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> White liberals be like, not Tom Hanks. That man's a national treasure. <laughs> He's literally a national treasure. Oh, he no. still has to save Private Ryan. <laughs> Biden, save us, please. Oh, no. <laughs> I just, uh, I actually, I just was sent this article, um, and I will link it in the thing, uh, but it's uh, by BuzzFeed News. It just came out, like, literally, like, right now. Uh, the headline is all Californians, nearly 40 million people have been ordered to stay home to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Um, and this is the California governor, Gavin Newsom, announced the order late Thursday, just an hour after officials in Los Angeles County, the most populous county in the U.S., issued a similar mandate. Um, and supposedly the Los Angeles order that they referred to uh, is going to last until at least until April 19th. And requires all businesses, including museums, malls, retail stores, and workplaces, to stop operations and only allow people to leave their home for essential activities, like picking up food, going to the doctor, taking a walk in the neighborhood. I like how that's essential. Uh, and it will take effect midnight Thursday, though businesses will have an additional day to prepare to close. Holy shit. So uh, I, uh, in the midst of uh, the past like three days, I kind of, well, I didn't kind of, I did just do a drive home through multiple states back to California just to be around, be closer to friends and family. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, shit's getting real. What do you, what do you all do to, uh, kind of work through, stay not bored and. Well, I, I realize that I am that I am basically a, a Berg now. I am, <laughs> I am part of the bourgeoisie because 
I still have a full time job. I'm working full time. Uh, as far as I can tell, my work is not impacted except for the fact that I get to work from home. But like I said, I get to work from home, so I love it. Um, I am very fortunate, I guess, in the position that I am in now that I don't have to worry about that. Um, and I'm also very used to and very much in love with the idea of staying home. Um, so <laughs> you and me but, both, sister. But the other thing is that like, I feel like now I'm getting even more phone calls than I did before <laughs> from other people because they're like, Oh, what's going on with you? Like I had a friend who was like, Hey, are, are you feeling, you know, stir crazy yet? And I think this was like on Tuesday and I was like, Mm, it's a little early to be stir crazy <laughs> so, but, <laughs> but it got me thinking like maybe we should uh if introverts fellow introverts we should uh reach out to our our, our friendly local extrovert and make sure they're okay <laughs> because they're not doing well <laughs> yeah i like that as a introvert also i think this is i'm just like cool i've prepared for this my whole life our time has come. I've been joking about it. Like, oh, our time has come. Finally, the <laughs> extroverts will have to live in our world instead of us doing, bending over backwards just to, like, you know, you know, you, you introverts out there, you know the whole running to the bathroom, pretending to take a dump, just to sit there and just be alone. Like, just like, that's like your only respite that you can get throughout the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, um, I mean, I got so many video games. I think MMOs are going to take off real big. That's going to be the only way that any of us get to go out. <laughs> <laughs> Into the virtual world. Into the virtual world. It's going to be Ready Player One. Going for a walk. <laughs> but that, I mean, yeah. And I got, you know, music. I just, uh, I just did a little small musical jam with my partner um, earlier before joining the call. So... Personally, like I said, I realize I'm a Berg. I'm I'm of the bourgeoisie. Uh, but <laughs> if um, you heard it you, straight from the horse's mouth, I am. But I am also <laughs> I'm on the lookout for for what's going on because you know with the 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 food supply short. Well, I, it's not shortages as far as I can tell with the food supply stuff. It's 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 a matter of logistics, not a matter of actual supply yes. or availability. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's a, like a demand. Um, and also you're putting yeah. yourself, like risking yourself to catch COVID-19 if you go out too. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I've been, I've been doing the Walmart grocery pickup and, uh, but even that has been, you know, a little bit cumbersome. There, all of the available times to pick up haven't been available for a while. Uh, there was one day where I was able to schedule a pickup, and then uh, that same day, a few hours before, I got an email from Walmart saying that they had to cancel it. Um, and I'm just getting like I, I'm I'm very cognizant of the fact that that families are really struggling with getting their basic necessities. So when I am ordering, I'm just trying to order just, you know, like n stuff that I don't think that other people are going to need because I, at the end of the day, uh, if it really comes to it, I will be fine for at least two weeks. Like, like right now I have a regular amount of food. If that food runs out, I will still have food. It just means that it will be very unhealthy food, but it will still be food. So I'm trying to think about the fact that, you know, I I can stretch out and right now it's just me and my partner living together with a, a small puppy so there's no reason for us to like go in and this is why I also didn't do the whole panic buying and like stocking hoarding every single item that I could find because I was like I don't need all those things so why would I do that but I didn't expect everyone else to think that they needed those things that was weird I really didn't expect that hmm. I, I guess I think you we talked we talked about this uh, a few days ago because I was with you a few days ago on my trip um, mm -hmm. to Cali. But um, 
I guess I'm a little bit of a amateur prepper, I guess. <laughs> so it was a few, I would say at least three or four weeks ago where I was like, oh, yep, yeah, it's time. It's, uh, it's time to stack stock up a bit, but um, not in like the hoarding kind of way. It was more like, oh, I need like a bag of rice, and some yeah. canned goods. I'm not like, oh, my God, my butthole. <laughs> But yeah, I'm. Uh, I I I was sewing today. Ooh, I learned that that skill. So when the revolution uh, comes, you know, I can uh, I can sew patches and make you a battle jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I'm just like it's it's like uh, the the thing is is I guess like. Now I feel a little bit now self-conscious about starting off by saying, oh, well, how I'm dealing with it is I'm totally fine because now I kind of feel like a dick, but, um, cause I know, I, this, I know that there is more people who aren't fine and that are very unsure of even where the threshold is for where they can feel fine is. Yeah. And that's like, that's, that's the part that I think that I'm being, I'm trying to be very cognizant of because. Like I said, I I knew that I didn't need to stockpile anything, um, or at least I didn't feel like I particularly deserved to, I guess. Um, but seeing how everyone else has sort of, like I said, decided that, oh, I need to stockpile everything, and how that's negatively infected or affected um, the people who actually do need, not to stockpile, but just need stuff. like. You know, they didn't like fam like families with with newborns, the elderly. Um, as far as I can tell, when all of this, the initial news of coronavirus hitting the U.S. was going on, I never heard about anyone saying anything in terms of we're going to run out of food, so stock up. Um, the reason why I got a little bit extra was because it just made me feel better to feel a little bit prepared uh, just in case or whatever. And it was like, it was like two weeks out. That was, that was like my thing. But to, to see that everybody was like, I need to prepare for like a year's worth of staying in a bunker um, all of a sudden. And it's like, okay, that's a big problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Seriously. My, I ser like, like for real, um, there may come a time where, will have to physically protect and and care for the the people in our neighborhoods who who aren't able to provide for themselves fend for themselves um you know like i i'm thinking you know i don't want to sound too alarmist but maybe this is is just cause but i'm thinking having to do like a trip where you go 2 miles out of the city to go to some gas station just in hopes of getting some box of cereal for your neighbor who has three kids or something like that. You know? Yeah. I don't know if it's, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like it's there yet. Uh, and yet is even like contingent. Like, I don't know if it's where it's going to go. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's but, the problem. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do think you bring up an excellent point about talking about and our positionality in this, like, I think I'll speak for myself, but kind of what you're saying will echo here and amplify is that, yeah, I'm very privileged to have to be in my situation. And uh, I think others in similar privileged positions should do their part as a civic duty. And honestly, just being a fucking empathetic, compassionate person mm -hmm. and a moral person to help those, especially who are in need whether it be neighbors in your local community, um, people who are houseless. Um, and uh, I don't know, I, I, one thing for me that kind of bothers me, there's a couple people, a um, couple friends that I have, and they're not taking the social distancing uh, very seriously. And they're mm. going out to, at least when they're open, now they're closed, but like to bars or like they want to have like a game night, board game night or whatever. Or, yeah. Yeah, and I'm just kind of like, Yo, that's like really selfish. Even if you're like our age, like millennial, and maybe not 
who might not have like as high of a risk of dying from this. Um, at the same time, like it's possible to be asymptomatic. There's a there's a pretty good percentage that you can do that. And furthermore, mm-hmm. like you're putting other people at risk. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's the same thing as they're very similar to you know why people should get flu shots like i think we've mentioned before like it's not just about you it's about other people it's about potentially still like the herd mentality infecting other people yeah exactly infecting other people especially those who (laughs) (laughs) especially those who are have immune deficiencies or mm -hmm, um, yeah no exactly this this is a this is the thing is that this is we all we all know and I'm just going to assume this for the audience, but we all know that capitalism is bad and that it hurts us and it kills. And this is, this is like a, this is a moment that is truly highlighting just all the faults oh, man. Uh, in capitalism. Uh, you know what I mean? There, there are so many examples of where capitalism is failing us in this situation. Uh, the biggest example I could think of is uh, the federal government injecting $1.5 trillion in to wall street um or but, uh not wall street specifically but what is what what is it it's like the federal reserve doing that shit to like yeah it's yeah uh, i forgot exactly it was like the qe i don't remember yeah and there's a lot of talk of quantitative easing what, quantitative that's a term easing, we yes. hear all the time that's a term you hear a lot at the moment yes. yeah what exactly is quantitative easing take printer out of box and mm-hmm. place on table with the out tray facing the window Load paper into the paper receptacle and place currency on glass tray F. Yep. Uh, once you've ascertained um, that uh, you have the alignment correct, yep. uh, you alert the banking sector, open the window and press copy. And you'd have to consider the wind direction too. Oh, yeah, you? you don't yeah. want to be doing this upwind. No, because you get covered in pretend money, couldn't you? you covered in what? Mm-hmm. It, it was for people who already had money. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, to, to, keep, to keep the market from c- crashing... And it worked for 15 minutes, <laughs> basically. And the thing, the thing that I, I feel like that I'm going to highlight and harp on for the rest of my life is, is the fact that the government was quicker to spend $1.5 trillion to save rich people than it has been <laughs> and continuously has been to save our lives. Yeah, but we can't afford it. I think that totally dispels that myth. <laughs> where is the money going to come from it's totally it's totally like socialism for corporations big business and elites yeah and um it's it's trickle down wow. isn't it pretty much <laughs> it's some some big brain moves right there <laughs> some four-dimensional chess instead of yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of investing in those who who could use and we still have social services and stuff like that. It's just like yeah. it's <laughs> it's really hard because in this moment there's so much going on that it's like like how do you like you know I I, I just want to say that if I think and people have, other people have said this too but if I think it's really important at this time too to not so not check the news all the time mm-hmm. maybe like once or twice a day if you can help it or like once every hour but like but basically make a conscious effort to to not check in because there there's literally like too much news like like the fact that our the president is is still trying to do his best to amplify his base with racist rhetoric regarding the quote unquote chinese virus um you know like it's like you you would hope i mean i i i never had any 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 hopes or or anything for for trump but but you would ha- there. There was some sense of a hope of like, maybe something like this would be something to to make a person like that calm down and go, "Hey guys, um, so yeah, all the stuff I was doing before that was just an act, guys. This is serious. <laughs> like, like all that stuff. Like, look, guys, I'm really, really sorry. All that stuff was just a bit, but this is for real. And instead, he's doubling down <laughs> and still being a complete fucking dick. Oh my gosh, I. So that's interesting you mentioned that because I was thinking like, so as of this recording, like there's a lot of speculation and it seems to be the case that there's going to be like 
um, money sent from the government to citizens. And there's also going to basically like this coronavirus like stimulus plan, right? Um, nothing's been said yet, but there's been a lot of like talk about a thousand dollars from like uh, Mitt Romney and some Republicans to like two thousand either a month from like what Bernie's saying or like like maybe two payments in the like two thousand. You know, there's a bunch of like different like combinations of this. But long story short, like it's interesting that like we have an election coming up, uh, most likely. But you know, who knows? That might get pushed back. We can talk about that too. But elections coming up, Trump's on the line. Um, Joe Biden's probably going to be the primary here, uh, you know, for the Dems. But you have this stimulus plan package that's being talked about, and there's I I I kind of have this suspicion that this is an opportunity for the Republicans to do like this kind of uh, like crisis socialist swing to the left, to appeal to the populace by giving like people free money, giving people like more a little bit more security, and in doing so, like the Dems who are quote unquote supposed to be left. Right, they're not really left in the global stage. They're, you know, they're center maybe. But you know what I'm saying? Like, so basically, like the Dems are not going to be able to be like, we did it. Instead, you know, Trump's going to be like, I did it. And instead, you know what I'm saying? So like, I think that, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think there's this possibility that you're going to see a kind of like a populist security stimulus net kind of thing, and and I think that'll boost the Republican uh, like conservative like PR image and also just like being reelected. Um, yeah. But I don't know, because I'm kind of biased. And I think that I have a sne- another sneaking suspicion that I think Biden is going to lose the 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 vote and Trump is going to win. It's going to be another four years. I don't want that to happen. Oh. And I'll make that clear. I really don't think, I, I really do not want Trump to win, but I just don't think Biden can do it. And I think if strategically, I think that they can, and I mean, they, I mean, the conservatives, like Republicans, they could totally like use this crisis to like help people, quote unquote, and, you know, use that to benefit them. So like, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want Trump to win. Uh, I don't want any Republican to win anything. Uh, not only do I not want Trump to win, I actually want him to no longer be, if that's a thing, like if that was an option. So Having said that, Biden will not be Trump. He was he, <laughs> he was at uh he was at Mar a Lago with a lot of people who ended up testing positive. So you know yes. Oh, but he took a test. He took a test. Oh. I took a test and I didn't I passed the test. I got an A, but I didn't have <laughs> coronavirus. Okay. It's I didn't get a C, I got an A. Can I be, uh I mean, I'm going to be anyway. I'm gonna be a little bit of a contrarian. Um I don't want either to win. Oh yes, um, I, I'm actually in agree with you. Let me clarify. I, mean, um, I agree because so like a situation were... where where everybody votes, but then everything explodes at the same time. <laughs> I mean, not so accelerationist <laughs> in that way. Black pill, I mean, you just you totally know. black pill there. <laughs> in like an ideal scenario, Sanders would be doing better in the primaries and all that, and that would be better mm-hmm. for everyone. Um, yeah, yeah, but. Uh, I would say, or my thought is that Biden might be worse than Trump because mm. Trump and his uh, his um, cabinet. What am Come I, on, Jack? What are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying to say, Jack? Just listen here, Jack. Um, and, and his administration <laughs> we'll are so outside. incompetent and so dumb that at least mm. everything that they do is a lot more visible. Where I think that the the mm. Democratic Party is basically the same. They don't agree on certain details, mm-hmm. but yes, they they stand for the same thing. They stand. They have the same interests overall. Yep. But like I'm talking about, yeah. not necessarily the people who vote Democratic Democratic Party, but the the actual the establishment. Uh, stab- yeah, the the, yeah. the yeah the establishment yeah. themselves. Um, I think that some I think they're gonna do swing, but yeah, especially with like yeah, Biden's right. history, voting record, and all that. Like they stand for a lot oh of the same God. shit, mm-hmm. and they're gonna oh, yes. do a lot of similar things, and they're yeah. gonna do it a lot more under the radar. I, and I think it's better to have the I, visibility. I, um, I think that the unfortunately, it's all gonna suck, <laughs> but at least, at least with the Trump first term 
at least it's all fucking out there and you can see it and then you and can, I, then it's easier to, to to call shit out and try and i don't know i feel hopeless in a lot of ways <laughs> but at least <laughs> like i'd rather, I'd rather see it and then be able to like <laughs> yeah to yeah have, i do have that i do think on, that but. i do think that um trump being elected instead of hillary uh but yeah i do think trump having been elected has mobilized more progressive and left uh leftist mm -hmm. groups um which is what this country needs however like i i suspect if number one if biden wins like that's it that's gonna just kind of calm down a little bit right uh, but two, the, but i i really don't yeah the, like this the sort of moderate democrat democratic yes. base is just like go back to go back See, to but, obama years yeah. and it's like it's See, just but that's what that's what brought trump bad. into <laughs> exactly. office yeah, exactly so it's just like so like oh man oh there's so Definitely, much i want to talk about but the, i don't know if i should it, talk about it on air <laughs> <laughs> like my family oh. being like yeah we're democrats go biden i'm like what are you doing oh my god a good thing though regardless about um the bernie's campaign though has been um the increase in in organizational yeah, effort sure. and like yeah and and it's kind of like taught a lot of people yeah and brought a lot of people together on the left yeah so he has an infrastructure that that socialist forward. infrastructure yeah there's there's i think like the through through all of this the left is becoming more galvanized and more like just, I think they're becoming a lot, a lot more vocal. Because um, yeah. even Biden, you know, assuming that he's going to be the nominee, has been trying to come out saying like, "Hey, uh, Bernie supporters, we stand for the same things. We just don't agree on the details." <laughs> uh, you come know, on, Jack. We're really going to need you. Like you, like he had, he had so little support amongst the 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 youth vote, uh, in in the last two primaries and like he knows it like he knows that he can't go forward without the rest of the vote but at the same time he has done nothing but show contempt for the people who he's trying to reach out to and so so it's just yeah and i think we're gonna um, the youth is gonna get blamed for that too so my, oh, that's yeah. my other prediction is when biden loses they're gonna it's because the 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 youth didn't come out to vote yeah, yeah there, because they no, were still like the bernie or bus there's no way right? there's no <laughs> and the reason yeah why, yeah there's yeah <laughs> the reason why the youth will get blamed is because moderates are Republicans uh, and and they employ the same tactics, which is shifting the blame um, and yeah. and churning the facts so it fits their worldview rather than accepting the facts as is and, you know, using basic science, reason, logic and deduction to make informed <laughs> analysis and decisions. Um, <laughs> You know, because all the numbers show that Biden is going to lose to Trump. Uh, they, even if you look at history, every time the the DNC chooses a moderate uh, candidate, they are very, very, very well equipped to lose to the Republican candidate, uh, basically 100% of the time. Um, and like with with like with like the the number like the numbers for 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 liberal progressive voters for young voters to overwhelmingly choose sanders over biden mm -hmm. means like there's no there's no like gray area in terms of uh in terms of like well you know the, you can't you can't you can't swing it one way or another and in, in terms of like how you how you view um the outcome or the current like situation which is that younger people are very much more um, in tune and aware of the situation that faces them uh, and their futures. And they're very concerned about that. And they're tired of people not listening to that. And sooner or later, you will not be able to shut that off. You can put your moderate candidate out there and say, well, you know, he's going to do a really good job of reaching across the aisles and, uh, pandering and you know um, capitulating to Republican ideals 
you know, uh, I, I recently learned about, you know, when Obama was in office that he would have these, you know, legislations and things that he would try to put out there. Um, and he had people in his own cabinet who were, who were going in there and saying, Oh, well, you got to take this out. You got to take this out. The Republicans, they, they won't have this. They were, they were editing their stuff before they even presented it to the Republicans. So they're, they're all, like they are, they're already bending the knee before, so they're not even trying to put up a fight. So that like this, they stand for absolutely nothing, and people see that. This is why I'm like, regardless of who wins, who loses, whatever. Like we gotta hit the streets. We gotta do a general strike. We gotta get our social activist game up. We gotta like build those community, nurture those relations. Like at least if Bernie was president and we tried, not we. But, you know, like in a total sci-fi novel that somebody might be reading where they like have a revolution, at least Bernie in the sci-fi novel would totally be like, no, we're not going to execute them. We're just going to give them great health care, you know, (laughs) but any of these other presidents uh, in the sci-fi fiction novel would be like, give them the wall. Trump, uh, uh, Trump, it would be like, kill them instantly. I, I want them out of here. And under Biden, it would be like, um, arrest them, uh, keep them out of the media spotlight for two weeks until people forget, and then kill them. <laughs> so <laughs> well, nobody knows. Well, well, but he'd use the chain that he talked about. Like, we're going to wrap that chain around you. Uh, you. You leave the razors in the in the in the rainwater and get them real nice and rusty. Yeah, but, yeah. So they get rusty. <laughs> Can we put the audio <laughs> clips of that in there? <laughs> <laughs> Named Bill Wright, Mouse, the only white guy, and he did all the pools. He was the mechanic. And I said, what am I going to do? He said, come down here in the basement where mechanics, where, where, where all the pool f- f- filter is. You know, the chain, there used to be a chain that went across the deep end. And he cut off a six-foot length of chain. He folded up. He said, you walk out with that chain. And you walk to the car and say, you may cut me, man, but I'm going to wrap this chain around your head. I said, you kidding me. He said, no, if you don't, don't come back. And he was right. So I walked out with the chain. And I walked up to my car. And they had, they, in those days, you used to remember the straight race. You'd bang them on the curb, get them rusty, put them in a rain barrel, get them rusty. Look at, look at, uh, look at the politics. Uh, look at the, you know, it's bringing us together. We're forgetting about the, the <laughs> pandemic. We're just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Let's. I, the other thing that I, I want to make sure people never live down is the fact that the DNC uh, um, um, engaged in voter suppression by still having the primaries in the middle of a pandemic, knowing that... Don't go out there, but go vote, but don't go out there. <laughs> Stay home. Don't go out there, but go, but go vote. Also, when you go out there, we will have the minimal amount of protection for you in terms of cleanliness there, I, I heard of like polling stations that are voting stations that had like one box of chlor, like Clorox wipes or one container. I mean, th- it, it should have just been canceled. It should have just been postponed. It should have all been not done. But, you know. Haven't, they, yeah. haven't they heard that Smashing Pumpkin thing. song? <laughs> Cleanliness is godliness. Godliness is um, shit. What is it? Uh, wait, can we, uh, producer, can you edit that in? Okay, we're going to get, it's going to get, uh, I'm going to have to mute it on YouTube again. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening on YouTube. Uh, you just heard an audio uh, clip of. Um, basically, what the DNC is doing is they're telling everybody that we're the good guys. Please believe us. We're, we know what's best for you, but they aren't cleaning their assholes <laughs> <laughs> to bring it around. This is, called a, this is called a bookend. You just did a full this, reach around, didn't you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the left is going to have to come and clean the assholes for them, and they're not going to like it. This is get, this is going to be like this is this is a huge wake up call for so many people. Both both of the, all of these things the the election, the pandemic, 
with the fact that California was it, they're estimating like 56% of Californians are going to lose their jobs. Yep. Yep. With a, what was it like? It was like 80,000 unemployment um, applications oh. were submitted in the past like two or three days or whatever. When usually it's like, what? Th- mm. I forgot the original number, but like it's, it's just an astronomical rate. And it's like, hey, um, so. I know you guys are over there being like, well, let's just imagine all the people living together in harmony and all this stuff. Uh, we're coming for your ass, guys. Look, it's <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> this isn't gonna. This isn't like a, hey guys, you know, let's just hunker down for a couple of weeks and you know, everything will be normal. It's like it's, no, this is not gonna be normal. Right now, there's a there's a there's a weird period where people are still trying to. There's a lot of people who are not used to being told to not leave the house. And as Americans, we are very, very eager to express our freedoms um, as many times as we can, as often as we can. And uh, the situation is not going to get better soon. And the people with whom have a lot to lose will make sure that everyone else feels it in some way or another. Like it's just whether through legislation or otherwise, probably through legislation, I hope, because then that's the, you know, the least violent path. But, but you know, it's, this is a huge wake up call for a lot of people and a lot of people are still, I think ga- like gauging off of like what I've seen online. I don't think people, I don't think a lot of people who have it good, like people who seem to, you know, be comfortable uh, in terms of like, you know, posting pictures of, oh, here I am quarantined. And they're like in their mansions and their, you know, nice lofty apartments with their exposed brick uh, walls and stuff like that. Like they're like, hey, so, you know, I'm over here with my Xbox, PS4, 360, whatever, just chilling, hanging out on my nice ass couch. They're like, oh, this is like a vacation. This is not a vacation. This is not, <laughs> this is not, um, if you're not doing anything, if you if you're in a position uh, where you can live like that, I think that you really need to make sure that you're doing everything you can to help out everyone around you, um, because this is not going to be a singular issue where each one of us. Oh, um, well, we could we could probably end because we're almost like in an hour. Um, but Sorry, just just to end, no, just yeah, to quickly ahead. end my end my rant before before we wrap up. Um, this is going to affect all of us in one way or another. Absolutely. So absolutely. So 100% I mean, like the entire this this changes the game going forward. And Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to say before like like the last thing I wanted to say before we really wrap up was that I I want to make sure that people have that in their minds because we we need, like like we've kind of been saying throughout is we need to exercise that compassion and empathy. Yes. Um, make sure we're ready to help each other out, you know, because yes. we are very much in, interconnected in this world. And, uh, and uh, the, there, there's a lot that we rely on from each other that, that we maybe have taken for granted for a long time. And uh, just, I'm just, you know, just be ready, be gentle with yourself. Like I said, don't check the news all the time um take breaks don't also i want to say don't feel like oh now i'm at home let me finally write that long that novel uh that i've been meaning to do like you don't have to all of a sudden be productive because you're at home like that's yeah capitalism telling you how to live like you can just be at home and be sad um if you that's where you're at um unless unless it's a like a passion that you don't yes. have time for it usually. Yeah, yes, exactly. Like, that take advantage <laughs> of the time if you feel inspired, but don't yes. feel like you're don't like, oh my God, up. now I have to be productive in a different way. Yeah, yeah don't beat um, yourself up. The idle hands is the devil's work. That's, that's bullshit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, enjoy, enjoy like not doing anything because maybe this is, you know, this is, you know, I mean, I feel like this is going to go into like, uh, like Marxism, like Marxist theory, but like, yo, this is called? closer to like the species nope. being like, you know, like, like this is closer to uh, you not being. You know, Maybe this is how we're supposed to be. Do you ever fucking, think about that? 
enjoy your time and help others and love yourself and be kind to yourself and be fucking critical of what's going on uh, in terms of like the like just be critical of basically uh yeah, just edit that out i'm just like spaced <laughs> as as uh as timothy leary once said i am here to make sure that that everyone knows to question authority and to think for themselves there you go that's it that's it um i so. i suspect that this will be the first of many it was going to be a mini episode, but it's like a full episode, but uh, many episodes quarantined. Um, we might be able to do more content. Who knows? Now that we're quarantined. And so hey, we forth. might be more productive. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> but if we're not, that's okay too. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, I think that's, there's a lot to process there. And I think there's a lot to process. Yeah. In the, the non-podcast listening world. Yeah, so... Take, Take your, your time, time processing because you're going to have a lot of it. Yeah. Maybe next time, maybe next time we can talk about um, ways to help in the community, uh, things to do that yeah. are productive slash not productive slash things to read. Maybe we can do a little book group. Maybe we can uh, play some video games, get that stream going. You know what? Let's play an RPG. Let's play, let's, let's play an RPG. We did a little D&D. &D. Yeah. Why, 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 Actually, um, I heard that. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, we we've been ahead. we 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 had, we there's a lot of D and D talk, but we're gonna. I have something else cooking up. Ooh, and, and you know what? A little, uh, a little maybe was, apocalypse world. Here. What a what a better time. What a better time. Ooh, what a yeah. better place. What a bet. <laughs> than a game entitled <laughs> yeah. Apocalypse World. <laughs> there you go. There we you have go. a we have a what are they, um. What is it called? Real play? Actual. Is yeah. That, is we have a, the, an actual play? Had, we've been planning yeah. for a while an actual play series. Hopefully it'll continue on. We will eventually play some D&D, &D, I'm sure. But I think <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to leave that to Lazarus to DM. But while I'm yeah! I'm going to take the take the reins at first. Um, Perfect. Uh, Perfect. But we can never get everybody yeah. together <laughs> yet, <laughs> just to have a meeting. Even first, even but... in even in quarantine, yeah, even in even self distancing, in, even, yeah. you know, like social distancing, we can. It's okay. We will, listeners. We will. <laughs> but all right, let's let's go ahead and call this episode, and uh, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully you'll hear from us soon. What do you mean, hopefully you'll hear from us? Soon? <laughs> oh wait. Oh whoops. I, I didn't mean it like that. I meant like, like the next episode will come out soon. Not like, uh, <laughs> yeah. ooh. <clears throat> All right. Uh, <laughs> Everyone yeah. just got super bummed out. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, and that oh. was the last of pandemic social distance travel, travel podcast. <laughs> All right. Oh. Hit that outro. <laughs> Peace. Public, public space travel. Ah, don't worry, buddy. You're doing fine. Ah, public space travel.